to Vince Russo's The Brand for a very special edition here with Vince Russo. I am a JP, a John Paz of the Triple Threat Podcast and, of course, the two-man power trip of wrestling. And with me today is the man behind the Brawl for All. The reason why we're all here today, Mr. Vince Russo. Vince Russo, welcome into a special feature, I guess, episode here on The Brand all about the Brawl for All. How you doing, John? Appreciate you, uh, you know, doing this um, when you uh, when you presented it to me. Yeah, bro, I, w- I was more than happy to do it. Listen, I don't. We didn't have the allotted time on the show to really get into everything. And yeah, bro, there were a lot of things I wanted to say that I didn't, you know, I didn't get the opportunity. I'm not saying they censored me or anything like that. They didn't. You know, just really, you know, the time constraints and whatnot. So I thought, man, you know, you're 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 a big fan. Uh, you know me. Uh, if we want to open this up a little and talk about things that maybe weren't discussed or you know whatever, I wanted to get all that out there. Yeah, and of course we're talking about the infamous Dark Side of the Ring documentary on Vice. Crave Canada, Viceland, whatever you want to call it, but at Dark Side of the Ring, Evan Husney and Jason Eisner, they do a great job of documenting everything. But obviously, you know, there's edits. It's only an hour or really 45 minutes, so there's edits. So I'm just curious, and and it wasn't talked about on the documentary, but the name Brawl for All, like just the name itself, what, who made that up? Is that you coming up with that? The yeah, actual, that, that, that the would have it? been me coming up with that name, yeah. So the actual idea behind it, and you, you kind of talk about a little bit of the documentary, all based on Bradshaw being a braggadocious, bully, tough guy? 100%. So what did he do or say that just kind of set you up? Basically, oh, I can kick this guy's ass. I can kick that guy's ass. Well, you know, I mean, you know, John, like, man, <laughs> when you're in that locker room, John, there are a lot of bad asses in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you know, like, you know, like, the dudes that would kill you. You know what I mean? I mean, you just, and bro, there's a lot of them. I I mean, and, 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 and John, like not so much today. Okay. But back then when wrestlers were wrestlers, bro, you had a lot of bad dudes. So I, I, I I remember, bro, it was me, Brad Shore, and I'm, I'm almost positive. Kevin Kelly was the third person there. And bro, Bradshaw just made this statement with a big smile on his face. Uh, he meant it 100%. And he basically said, you know, if, if this shit were real, I would kick everybody's ass in the locker room. And w- when he said it, bro, I kind of like snickered because my, my mind kind of went through a quick card catalog of who was in the locker room. Right. And and like, and I'm saying to myself, bro, that's real easy to say. You know, anybody could say that and anybody could make that claim, but like backing that up is something that would be totally different. So like that, those were the thoughts that ran through my head when Brad Shaw made that statement. And bro, you, you gotta, you gotta understand too. The statement was made very cocky, very braggadocious, matter of fact. And like, I was like, ah, bro, you know, I really don't think so. So when you kind of, that happens and you're pitching this idea and coming up with this idea, what's like the next step? You go to Vince and say, Vince, I have this idea, but it's not really an idea. It's just a, basically a thought. Yeah, bro, he, he, listen, John, the, I say this all the time, the wrestling business went down the shitter and continues to go down the shitter when the writers left. Okay. And to this day, bro, wrestling bookers, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, you, you know, you, you have your marks like Tony Khan, mm-hmm. then you got your wrestlers, you know, you got your Cody Rhodes, R- Rhodeses and all these, then you got your Triple H's and you got your Paul Heyman's and you got your Bruce Pritchett's. Bro, all of them are, you know, you know, you're either a, you're either of the wrestling mentality or you're a mark, okay? 
You did not go to school for journalism, okay? You did not write for any newspapers. You did not write books. You did not write movie scripts. You right. did not write television scripts. You don't have a clue about writing for television. Not a clue. So that's why I say all the time, the television writers are in place, Russo and Ferrara. Ratings are at an all-time high. The television writers leave, boom, back in the hands of the wrestlers. They don't know how to write TV. So with that, John, they don't know the process. And the process is, at first it was me by myself, but then it became me and Ed, okay? Yeah. Bro, you go to Vince's house. Vince has nothing. Vince is not thinking about Raw all week long. Vince is running a company. Okay, bro? So Vince ain't thinking about creative. So when, when Russo and Ferrara sit at Vince's dining room table with him, John, it's rapid fire. It's idea after idea after idea because Vince has nothing. So, and, and of course, bro, me, me and, um, me and Ed have a agenda Th there are things we really want on the show and we're really going to push, but bro, it's boom, 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 boom. And brawl for all was one of the things on the list that day, uh, based on what Bradshaw said. Now, you got to understand a couple of things, John. This idea is not vital to the show. Like, right, this right. Idea, it's a standalone, bro. This ain't yeah. McMahon versus Austin. This ain't Rock and Austin. This is a standalone. This is totally separate. So whether we do the brawl for all or not doesn't matter. We're, we're, still, we're still selling our show. You know, Taker and Mick and, you know, what, you know, the whole thing. Yep. So, bro, like, honestly, when I'm pitching that, I have no idea what Vince's response is going to be. Because, bro, like, th th that's why in my, in my position, bro, I had to have a very thick skin because as I'm pitching rapid fire, which was my job and which is what I was paid to do, there are going to be some things Vince doesn't like. And, and that never affected me personally because I knew, bro, I got to come up with 20, 30, 40 ideas. I, it, that's just the way it was. So when I throw a brawl for all out there, okay, bro, it's another, first of all, like I said, uh, it, it, it wasn't, oh, by the way, this was not important to the show. Uh, number two, it was just another idea on a list of many. And number three, Bro, I don't know how Vince is going to react to it, hmm. but it was it was another idea on the list. I I told him where it derived from. I threw it out there to him. Vince made the decision. I like it. We're going to go forward with this. So Vince obviously has to okay the idea and push the idea along. I think this is right in his wheelhouse. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like perfect for him. This is the guy wrestling Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle on an airplane. This what? is the guy that wants to try Mr. Perfect, you know, back in the day, see what he's got. Right. I mean, he seems like the perfect guy that want to see, okay, who's toughest, who is the One best? million percent, John. And John, I'm telling you like, bro, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. In, in, way in the back of my mind, I, I knew that. Like I knew, bro, Vince gets off on that shit. And I knew, man, if, 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 if this were a shoot, Vince would love to see who the toughest guy in right. that locker room was. I knew for it, the exact reasons that you just said. So who's actually picking the guys in the tournament? Like for real, is it Bruce Pritchard? Is it you? Is it Vince? Is it JR? Bro, when, who's picking the guys? When Ed pitched that idea, John, we're done with it. As far as who's in the tournament, as far as what they're getting paid, as far as the rules of the tournament, as far as judges, as far as all of that shit, bro, at the idea concept, we were pretty much done with it. So I, bro, all I really know is I know Bruce made the calls. 
who Bruce decided to call, I don't know. What what Bruce offered them money-wise, I don't know. Bro, I will tell you this without a shadow of a doubt, okay? We did not have a list of names, okay? Bro, never once in that creative meeting was it discussed. The winner of this gets a program with Austin. The winner yeah, of right. never once, John, never once. That was not the idea behind it. Our original idea behind it was, bro, this is a brawl for all. This is a shoot. We didn't know who was going to be in it. We didn't know who was going to win it. Bro, it didn't matter to us who won it. This shit about the winner faces Austin and there's a program and this and that. That's what I was trying to tell Bart on the show. Because he, he was saying, well, Kevin Kelly told me, bro, do this. This is a great idea. You could get, bro, Kevin Kelly was not on creative. Mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly was an announcer. So Bart, whatever Kevin Kelly is telling you, that's not coming from creative. Bro, It, it number one, we didn't know who was going to be in it. Number two, it didn't matter to us who won it. It had no, no bearing on our creative, no bearing on our writing, nothing. That whole idea of, you know, Dr. Death in a program with Austin, bro, that was in JR's head. Dr. Death was JR's boy. That was all JR. Me, Ed Ferrara, Vince McMahon never, ever, ever discussed that. Not one single time. That was going to be my next thing because that's the huge rumor. Been the rumor ever since I was a fan. I mean, this is almost like the uh, beginning days of the internet fan uh, uh, listening to that rumor about Dr. Death, how the tournament was designed for him. It was set up for him. He was going to feud with Steve Austin next. Absolutely and he was going to win. not. Now, John, I can only tell you the conversations between me, Ed, and Vince. Th th that's all I could tell you. And th that's where the idea started. That's where Vince approved it. So I can only tell you those conversations. Bro, what, whatever Vince and JR were talking about, whatever Bruce and JR, whatever they were talking about, bro, I, I'm not privy to. I, I don't know what they're talking about. Once Vince greenlighted the idea, bro, we're on to the next thing, you know, cr creatively. But never. Did we say put Dr. Death in the tournament? Okay, bro, let's all assume Dr. Death's going over. And then, we'll, bro, never. I'm telling you, that all came from JR because of his relationship with Dr. Death. Now, bro, I will tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. JR started publicly being talking very up Dr. Death. about Dr. Death, almost like JBL now. Almost like JBL, and I'll never forget freaking JR saying, and there was a group of us there. You know, you see that brick wall right there? You see that brick wall? Doc Death go right through that brick wall. Bro, it got to the point where I know myself, Ed, probably Vince, and a lot of other people, bro, were quietly rooting against Dr. Death because of the way Jim was building him up. That's why when Bart starts going into, oh, bro, I was punished for beating Dr. Death. No, bro. When, when you beat Dr. Death, there was a huge pop. Not, not because, bro, everybody loves Steve Williams. Steve hmm. Williams was a hell of a guy. I loved Steve Williams. Had nothing to do with him, but it was like JR built this guy up like nobody was going to be able to touch him. And bro, like when, when, you know, Bart cleaned his clock, hmm. bro, you had a lot of people that thought it was hysterical. So that's why when Bart's going on with, oh, bro, I was punished and you fed me the butterbean, I'm like, Bro, it was the total opposite. That's not what happened. And 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 John, I I tend to get very frustrated when like, bro, I'm telling you the truth. 
Mm -hmm. There is no reason for me in the world after 20 years, there, there's mm -hmm. no reason for it, bro. I'm telling you the truth, but like Bart in his head, he, he still has this scenario. And, and I, that's why I was trying to tell him on the wrong, on the show, bro, with all due respect, you're wrong. I'm telling you, bro, you are wrong. The thing with Dr. Death that kind of surprises me, he was, I think, 37 or 38. He had so many injuries at this point. So it's not like he's in the prime of his career, though, or the prime of his wrestling life, essentially. And with him, and, and this is the huge thing I was told about, even Severn, too. Why would you put him in boxing gloves if you really wanted him to win? Wouldn't you do the UFC-style gloves so he can literally grab the guy and wrestle him? Bro, it's I'm, I'm, almost killed Dr. Death. I mean, it, boxing John, gloves. John, I am telling you, from the, from the, the creative team, you know, J, JR is talent relations. Mm -hmm. yep. From the creative team, the the fin who, who was in it, and the finish was never discussed. This was organic. This to us, this was a hundred percent shoot. Now, bro, the the only thing was who went over. Well, yeah, bro. Then we would creatively have to think about what to do with this guy because he won he went now 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 this a legitimate tough guy. So whoever goes over, yeah, bro, creatively, we're going to have to discuss him, but never discuss that person facing Austin. Ne bro, that shit never happened. So the only thing that it's confusing about the Dr. Death Austin part is if you really look at the storylines going on. So it was Austin Kane. That was the big feud going in. Then Austin Undertaker, which was being built for months going into SummerSlam. So where would and then after that it was going to be Austin Rock and then a little bit more of Austin Undertaker. But where would Steve Steve Williams fit into that? You, you, you want to know where Steve Williams fit in? Steve Williams fit in in Jim Ross's mind. Okay, that's where Jim. That's where that that's where you know Steve Williams fit in in Jim Ross's mind. That was the only place, bro. It wasn't Vince. I mean, bro, Vince would have told us at that table, all right, guys, then we need to work this and Steve Williams needs to go over. Bro, his name wasn't even brought up. N nobody's name was brought up, but it was JR who started campaigning and, you know, Dr. Death this and Dr. Death that. This was not within creative, bro. What did you think about the idea? And they say it on the show. I and I just think this part is so funny. I mean, I I, I like Bruce Pritchard of the separately. I mean, he's fine or whatever, and have an okay uh, relationship with a few times I've spoken with him. But it's funny that they use his podcast and his words as like the truth of the matter of what happened. So are they really picking names out of a brown bag? Because I just kind of laughed. I was like, can we really take whatever he's saying in his podcast for truth? I yeah, just, he's telling stories kind of. Yeah, so John, are they really I don't know. Names out of like, bag? Bro, I swear to you, I don't have a clue. I, the, the 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 process of who was chosen and the process of who faced who bro i i don't have a clue it it was not that it was not creatively set up that way who faces who that who's in it who faces who was not set up on the creative level that's when it was handed over to talent relations. And like I said, bro, what, whatever conversations Bruce had with those guys, I, I was not privy to, I do not know. So if the brackets changed, like they kind of did, like Bart got changed and almost they changed it. So he would face Dr. Death in, in the next round. It seemed like they changed it. I'm not sure really how the brackets, that wouldn't be you, right? You wouldn't be changing any brackets. I, 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 bro, I, I, I honestly think John, and I would have to go back and look because I, I don't remember, but I would honestly think one the once the brackets were set, I would honestly think they had to remain that way. But then there were some things where what was it? Injuries. Some, yeah, some guy somebody couldn't go forward and Mero got Draws, a second shot. injuries. Yeah, there, there was stuff like that. But I really believe if you look at the way the original brackets were set up, I don't think those brackets were changed. I could be wrong, but I don't think they were. Was the cash prizes, quote unquote, was that real? Did they really get bonus? They really get money for winning? Yes, they did. But I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was, but money was an incentive. And bro, that's why a lot of guys did it. A, a lot of guys did it for the money. Yes, that was an incentive.
So going into it, who do you think is going to win? Just just judging by they pick the names, everybody's on the list. Doctor Death, Godfather, Bradshaw, uh, Bark on the roll. Who did you think was going to win? I did not think at all. I, I mean, Bart Gunn was not a thought in my mind. No. Not even a thought. I had no idea. I real. I thought the Godfather was going to win. He um, obviously has some boxing background stuff and yeah. huge, huge guy. Yeah. Tough and, bro, guy. And think about that. I'm telling you, I thought the Godfather was going to win. Okay, Godfather is a huge baby face. Yep. So we're going to put him in a program with Austin. <laughs> right. You, 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 right. See, bro, people don't want to like ask those questions. You know what I'm saying? But but right. think about that. I legitimately thought Godfather was the toughest guy. Huge baby face at the time. Okay, bro. So if he wins this, he's facing Austin now. Right. I mean, come on. That, 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 that's where I get so pissed off, bro. Like th th that's just the wrestling world, man. John, it, it's just it's so full of shit. You know, everybody's got an agenda. You know, you know. Okay, bro, we 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 want to paint Vince Russo in this light. It's like, bro, get get, get over yourself. Like, you, you just have people in the business, bro, that they, they will never grow up. And I'm I'm always the guy that I always say, bro, like, look at this logically. Just, just bro, just look at it logically. Does it make any sense? You know, I'm telling you, I think the Godfather is going to win this thing. So, like. Okay, in my mind, we're booking the Godfather in Austin. Come on, man. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. My only thing is, and it's funny because you could literally have evidence of looking it up, but so WrestleMania, Austin beats Michaels, obviously going forward. He, they, obviously, you know, he, he's going to lose to Kane in between and, and all this other stuff, but Undertaker beats Kane. You could see they're leading, or you guys, you're writing Austin, Undertaker, MSG, SummerSlam. It's all building to that. Why and would you could correct me? Why would the brawl for all ever kind of interject and change and change your plan of Austin Undertaker? Right? It would because, never do that, right? Bro, can I can I tell you why? Listen, you want to know the truth? He, yes. he, he is the God honest truth. I love Jim Ross to death. Mm -hmm. Okay. My biggest regret, and people say, Well, regret in the business, what would you do differently? Bro, I wouldn't do anything differently. Okay. First of all, Bro, I'm not one of the guys sitting here saying the brawl for all was a bad idea. I would never do it again. First of all, John, you have to understand, okay? Again, to me, to me, nobody brought up injuries prior to this thing. Nobody brought up, oh, bro, they're out of their element. They could get hurt or they, nobody, not one person to me said anything about any injuries bro that line of jim Cornette about cutting the promo on me after uh, steve williams lost bro mm. i'm not gonna call jim Cornette a liar but john i'm telling you no jim i don't recall you ever confronting me and ever saying that to me now could i have forgotten yeah, bro, I've forgotten a lot of things. But unfortunately, Jeff, uh, 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 Jim, you've never confronted me face to face, ever. Everything you have always said about me has been when there's been distance between us. You never confronted me face to face at WWE. The only time he did it, bro, was when I left and he called on the phone. And left a voicemail, never, ever confronted me one time at the WWE. So his little confrontation in his head about Dr. Death, ah, Jim, I hate to burst your bubble. No, I don't recall that happening at all. People don't forget, bro. I went on to work with Jim Cornette at TNA. Never one time when we were in that same building, weak. After week, after week, after week, after week, after week, did Jim Cornette ever confront me to my face? When did he confront me, bro? He confronted me when he was let go. That's when he confronted me again through the internet. Never once has this man confronted me to my face. And bro, if you want to know why, again, I talk about facts, bro. Go on YouTube, look up Santino Morello, 
and Jim Cornette. And you will see how Jim reacts in a face-to-face -face encounter when he doesn't have any power. You see, Jim Cornette slapped Santino Morello across the face mm -hmm. when Santino Morello was working for Jim Cornette because Jim Cornette was in a management position at the WWE. And Jim Cornette knows that. Jim Cornette knows this guy lays a hand on me. He's done. Like, I'm management. But when Jim Cornette was a, wasn't working for anybody and was confronted by Santino Morello at a convention, well, bro, the, you all saw what a tough guy, you know, Jim Cornette was. So, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, bro, nobody, not one person, John, brought up, oh, these guys could get hurt. They're out of their element. Here's my only regret, John. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I know today, right now, not 1999, bro, 1999, I'm, I, I don't regret guys pulling hamstrings and I don't regret that, bro. Like the, these are supposed to be athletes. Okay, bro. If you get hurt, whatever you, you heard what the Godfather said, you know, yeah. I, I went in, I went into this in my own volition. You know, I knew it. He is, he, he is His what wife I wanted him to win that money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here's, here's my only, uh, in the last 20 years, bro, here's my only, uh, where I, cha I change my stance because of now what we know about concussions mm -hmm. and CTE and head trauma, because of that, I would not, I would not have pitched this idea because I would not have have wanted to see somebody you know suffer you know a can cut like bro i i if we would have known then i would not have booked this but guys pulling hamstrings and tear, tearing quads and whatnot no bro like that 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 wouldn't have prohibited me from pitching this but like i said again john after the fact you, you, you know, from Jim Ross on down, oh, it was such a bad idea because so many people got hurt. But nobody was talking about that beforehand. You, Of course, it's so easy to say when the thing is over. Not one person was talking about that beforehand. Bro, if anybody, Vince McMahon should have been worrying about his talent getting hurt in this thing. Vince went on with the brawl for all, bro. Is it your fault though? Because it's your idea, or is it Vince's fault that he's not protecting the guys better? Bro, that that that's what's laughable to me. I, I I find that so hysterical, bro. How not not one of these pansies on the show will bury Vince McMahon. Not freaking one of them. Jim Cornette will sit there and go on and on and on and on about what a horrible idea it was by the shit stain. Okay. Meanwhile, bro. Vince McMahon is making the decision of what's on his show. It's it's not the Vince Russo show. I'm not telling Vince McMahon, okay, Vince, starting this week, we're going to be doing this brawl for all. No, bro. Vince McMahon is picking and choosing what's on his show. Ed Ferrara and I are pitching many ideas by Vince McMahon. But the fact that Vince decides this is what we're going to do, Bottom line, Jim Cornette doesn't have the balls to cut a promo like that on Vince McMahon. And quite frankly, nobody does. Nobody has the balls to cut that promo on Vince. So let's let's cut it on Vince Russo because he had the audacity to even pitch it. That just, bro, that right there shows you the people, the, the lifers in the wrestling business. That right there, bro, shows you their character. Nobody is going to call Vince McMahon out. We're going to call out the guy that pitched the idea. Th that's what the wrestling business is all about. So when this thing is going on, let's just say, you know, guerrilla position, whatever, everybody's back that you said a lot of the people had a lot of interest and stuff. What is Vince's reaction when he's actually watching these fights? I mean, is he into it? Is he acting like it's, a, you know, like he's like going crazy? Is he calm, cool, collected? What, what's his, going uh, bro, on in his I head? Don't, I don't remember 
being around Vince while he was watching these fights. Like, bro, I don't remember this, but bro, I, I could just tell you knowing Vince, like he's loving this. Like this yeah, is, right. this is bro. So his element, bro, I swear to God. And I'm not even kidding you. I'm, I'm surprised Vince didn't put himself in it. <laughs> like, I, I mean, bro, yeah. I, I'm, I'm dead serious, bro. A lot of people don't know this. Okay, bro. Th this is why I say these things, you know, it's like, bro, Vince got off on this idea because it's right in his wheelhouse and he wanted to do it. And you, like, you're going to put the heat on the writer. Like, like, bro, do you remember years and years ago? God, bro, we're probably going back maybe 98. Do you remember when Eric Bischoff on the air challenged Vince McMahon to show up at that arena the whole yes. nine months? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Bro, I'm in Vince's house the next day. He's livid. As a shoot, bro, it's like, bro, nobody calls me out. Like, you, you know what I mean? You, you could take your shots at me, but it was almost like now you're calling me out as a man. Bro, he was livid. John, I swear to you. And, and who knows what would have happened? Do you know the only reason Vince McMahon did not get on a plane and go to that show? No. Mm -mm. Stephanie McMahon graduated college that day. <laughs> John, I, I'm wow. telling you. If it was not Stephanie's graduation day, Vince McMahon would have showed up. I'm telling you, that's that's Vince. Bro, when it's that man shit, Vince, you just don't go there with him, bro. He's a big, strong guy, but he's not very athletic or very mobile. Uh, that's yeah, for sure. But, but the, his mind is. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, you, you know, it's funny. It's like he, he would probably want to be in it if he could. Obviously, he doesn't want to get, get his ass beat or his ass knocked out, uh, get knocked out. But, you know, he'd want to be in it. What do you think is going on, like, with the other guys, with, like, Bruce? And obviously, JR is rooting for um, uh, Dr. Death. And I'm sure Bruce is rooting for JBL. Is there, like, a, a, like a lot, a, um, alliances, allegiances, like, backstage? Like, they one guy pulling for another guy, Cornette pulling. Like, is there, like, that stuff going on? Are you and Ed, like, oh, really hope the Godfather wins? Is any of that going on backstage? Well, there, there was never me and Ed hoping the Godfather wins, bro. Like, oh, okay. we, we, we didn't hope anybody won. I thought he would win. Okay. But I was not, bro. Listen, if I was pulling for anything, I was pulling for J JBL to get knocked out. Right. Okay. Right. So like I, I, I like that was the whole thing. I, I want somebody to shut this braggadocious. I just want somebody to shut his mouth. Who, who rooting for anybody, bro? We, we, we were not rooting for anybody. You know, again, bro. That that's the thing. I, I don't think people understand. At that time, like the departments in the WWE were very isolated. You know, bro, Kevin Dunn ran TV. That's mm -hmm. what Kevin Dunn did. I did not, I did not broach on Kevin's territory. Okay. Only if Kevin contacted me, you know, JR ran talent relations. I did not broach on JR's, you know, unless he came to us. We, we did creative. OK, so whatever conversations these guys were having outside of those meetings between the three of us, like, bro, I have like absolutely no idea. But again, like I'm, I'm just telling you, not one freaking person approached us being concerned with injuries. Not one, not Pritchard, not Ross, not Cornette, not one person so if they were talking about that bro they were talking amongst themselves they never brought that to us creatively it does seem like in retrospect the injuries was probably the worst part of the whole thing I mean, it's so many injuries uh hawk couldn't continue uh him and draws when they had their fight it went to a draw he couldn't continue he got injured um uh, Steve Blackman got injured. Uh, Dan Severn just ended up with withdrawing after winning. Uh, Godfather ends up getting injured. Is that one of those things where creatively it's like, oh shit, this is a huge mistake. Now everybody's hurt after the fact. Like when when you got storylines or something set up, like ah oh, shit, Godfather's out for six. Well, months. I swear to like God, that. if 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 there if there's something I'm 
at fault for, bro, I didn't even think about the injuries. Hmm. Like I, I really didn't. I mean, bro, be, we weren't talking about guys going 12 rounds here. Right. You know what I'm saying, bro? You're mm-hmm. talking about like three very short rounds. Bro, I, I, I'm, just, I'm being as honest as I could. I did not foresee the injuries. That's why I'm saying, you know, me and Ed are writers. You know, we're not wrestlers. Like we're, we're writers. So when we're writing this, you know, on paper, this looks like, you know, an interesting idea. Bro, we're not thinking about guys getting injured. That's why I'm saying if somebody would have come to us and said, you know, you guys do know that these guys are completely out of their element, blah, 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 blah. Perhaps we would have looked at it a different way. But I mean, bro, we never, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not going to speak for Ed. I never considered the amount of injuries. Never. So Bradshaw, he's in the first round. He beats Henry Godwin, Godwin, Mark Canterbury. Then he beats Mark Merrow, who ends up getting a bye, basically because he loses Steve Blackman. Steve Blackman gets injured. He, so now it's Merrow, Bradshaw. Bradshaw beats Merrow. Then um, Salvio beats Brackus. And it's funny that Brackus is in there. He's not really a tough guy, but you know whatever. Uh, draws and Hawk draw. So then Salvio draws, draws beats Savio. So then you got draws versus Blackman. And this is just one part of the bracket, but each time Bradshaw is going through, are you getting more and more, ner- more and more nervous? Like shit, this idea is backfiring no. big time. Bro, I knew he wasn't going to win it. I knew really, it. I knew it, bro. I knew cause I knew Bradshaw and, and bro, Brad, listen, with all due respect, I- I'm a New Yorker. Bradshaw is one of those Texas guys, okay? Mm-hmm. Bro, just yeah. a, a, I'm I'm sorry, bro, but he came across as a big mouth Texan who was full of shit. And, and bro, as soon as those words came out of his mouth, I knew in my mind, bro, no, you 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 couldn't beat up everybody in the locker room, bro. No, you're you're not as tough as this, you know, as this front you're putting on. So no, bro, I did. I did not believe for one second. And then, bro, especially when I started seeing Bart knock people out, I'm like, bro, you're like, you're not going to beat him. Like, never, never, bro, did I think he was going to win this thing. Was the draws decision, is that something that the judges, like, they get something in their headset from Vince? Because it seemed like draws beat Bradshaw in that fight to me. I mean, who knows? It's up to the judges and stuff like that. And Bradshaw wins the decision. Is that ever like a little, little change in the script there where Bro, Vince is that, like, no, that, Bradshaw's that, winning? That very well could have happened. Very well. Vince is on headsets. Very, that very well. But again, bro, if something like that happened, I'm. Totally, totally oblivious to it. But but could it have happened? Absolutely. Like, bro, I'll give you the perfect example. When Mark Merrow lost that match, mm-hmm. bro, him and, and Sable were livid. And, and Mark was convinced. Bro, Mark Merrow was not well-liked. Sable was not well-liked. So Mark Merrow was livid that he got screwed, bro. I'm going to tell you something because I know how they felt about Mero. Bro, I don't doubt that for a second. I don't doubt doubt that for a second. Vince on the headphones, Mm -hmm. I don't doubt that for a second. He was livid. And Mark Merrow was legit, bro. I mean, oh yeah, Golden Glove boxer. Oh yeah, Mark Merrow yeah. was yeah. legit, and um, you know, so bro, could stuff like that have happened? Absolutely, I, but not not anything that I could get. I could give you a scoop on. I was yeah, never okay. privy to that, bro. So then the other part, the the down part of the bracket, Bart Gunn beats Bob Holly, who was another legit tough guy. For some reason, not uh, interviewed on that on that doc. Maybe he didn't want to be a part of it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, bro. 100% badass. 1000% Bob Holly. And uh, Quebecer Pierre, AKA PCO against Dr. Death. Dr. Death gets the win. And they kept talking about how, you know, he's got one eye. I can only see out of one eye. It was kind of unfair. Pierre, the, what I know him as, and I've talked to him a few times, he is a nut. He will fight anybody. He'll do anything. So it's not like they had to beg him to be in it, right? No, I mean, he probably no. wanted to do it. No, yeah, yeah. Bro, listen, guys, guys can say whatever they want after the fact. Nobody was forced to be in this, okay? 
I could tell you from creative and Vince McMahon, there was no dangle carrot of you get a shot against Austin. Okay, bro. This was all about, honestly, bro, for guys that decided to be in it, in my opinion, it was all about the money. Right. right. You, you, you were getting paid to be in this. Do you want a good payday? I mean, Godfather said it. I mean, you know, and, and what Godfather said, I would have to believe that was the mentality of 90% of the guys. Nobody was forced to be in this thing, bro. Bro, creative did not say, bro, if you're not in this, it's going to hurt your push. We didn't even know who was going to be in it. Right, right. So then the next thing is that Dan Severn beats Godfather, but he withdraws. He t- he's, I guess, nothing really to prove. He's a former UFC champion multiple times. He's one of the best of all time. So he withdraws. Scorpio beats Eight Ball. Scorpio, one of those underground, really like tough guys. If you ever hear the story of him fighting Hawk on yeah. that bus, Hawk yeah. couldn't even land a punch. Scorpio landed like five punches. For- anyway, he's just like fast. He's tough. Yeah. He's just, uh, you wouldn't expect it, but he's a tough guy. Uh, then the next round, uh, Godfather beats Scorpio. And then, of course, the infamous Bart Gun knocking out Dr. Death. Were you shocked by this knockout? Yes. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. bro. I, I was, I was shocked by how hard Bart hit him. Oh like, my God. That's yeah. what Bart going over did not shock me. How hard he hit him. Like I was like, holy shit. You could tell Bart Gunn's been in a fight or two in his life. Oh, yeah. that that's <laughs> when like I woke up like, Bro, like this guy is a killer. Mm. Um, that that's when I woke up. But again, bro, here's what happened. As soon as that happened, Jr. went into excuse mode. So like he made it worse than it mm. like already was. Oh, bro, he got his ham, got his hamstring torn up to his yeah. ass. You know, like it it is what it is bro it listen it happens in a fight sometimes it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go John, i swear to god do you remember it's just it's funny to me john because it's like all these guys got hurt right mm-hmm. but john these guys are world class athletes these guys are in the gym training every day training body parts every day these are not guys that are out of shape Right. Okay, bro. So, you know, that that that's why I'm saying these guys beforehand thinking they were going to be, bro, you're full of shit. This these these were three rounders. These were athletes. John, I can how John, how many celebrity boxing matches have you seen? Oh, a few. They're horrible, but I've seen a few. Yeah. I mean, have, 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 do you ever hear of any of those guys getting hurt? Bro, no, sometimes people, knocked out, but not hurt, hurt. Right, yeah. bro. You got people getting into a ring not knowing what they're freaking doing. Screech. You know, I remember seeing China <laughs> against Joey Buttafuoco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanya yeah. Harding. Mm-hmm. They never got hurt. Now you're talking about, bro, professional athletes who work out every single day. This is how they make a living. And your goal, your first thought is going to be, oh my God, bro, these guys are going to drop like flies. Meanwhile, when you're booking Joey Buttafuoco (laughs) against China, like you're not thinking, oh God, maybe China could get hurt. Right. (laughs) You know, like that's why I'm saying, bro, that's the wrestling business. They're all so full of shit. Shit, bro. Why do you think I'm here and there? There, they're they're just so full of shit. It, it's like what whatever is the good story, bro. Whatever is the good story, whatever agenda I want to get across, bro. That they're, they're all such full of shit. It's it, 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 it's comical, man. When you know and you know the players, it's freaking comical. And then, of course, the next round, really, Bart Gun knocks out the Godfather. Another shocking knockout. Another unbelievable knockout as well. John, I never to this day, I've never in my life seen anybody get hit that hard. Godfather's eyes rolled to the back of his head. And bro, it's not so much that. You got to take into consideration the size of the Godfather. Yeah, he's a monster. The background of the Godfather. Bro, when somebody that 
big gets hit like that. I mean, bro, you could even look at like, you know, you'd have to go back and look at like, you know, when Mike Tyson obliviated Michael, Michael Spinks. Mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. Yep. Bro, Michael Spinks was like a string bean. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah. okay. I would expect I, but bro, the size of the Godfather, God knows how many fights he had in his life. Yep. Hey, okay, yep. bro. Yeah. You could tell he's been in a few fights. Yep. It was like, bro, like I can't, I, I can't believe what I just saw. It's almost like, um, like the quiet guy, like underdog kind of guy, Bart Gunn. It's like, don't mess with that guy. Like never whoever's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. That's the guy not to mess with. a word, never bragged nothing. He like went through this thing without saying anything. And it was, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, bro. Like I, to this, to this day, I've never seen anybody hit that hard. So were you nervous bark on Bradshaw at all in the finals? Like, oh shit, Bradshaw may have a chance of winning. No, no chance. No, 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 no chance. No chance. No chance. And and I will go as far as saying after seeing that Godfather fight, I know Bradshaw was scared going into that fight. Mm -hmm. And you could see it when he comes out. I he's, little, know. he's timid. Yeah. Bro, bit, yeah. Look, at, look at Layfield and look at Bart. And you see two completely different, um, you know, you, you just see two completely different emotions. Reaction. Yeah, yeah. There Reaction, isn't emotion. a doubt in Bart's mind. You can look at him and like, and then you look at Bradshaw and, and bro, that's the thing, man. Cause you know, I've spoken to some UFC fighters and that's the thing that they told me, even Chael Sonnen. He said, bro, if you've got like that one pinch of fear in your mind, you're done. Like before it starts, bro, you're done. And you could you could see that in JBL's eyes, bro. What's your reaction? I mean, the first knockdown is great. They probably could have stopped right there. But then he stands back up and he just completely obliterates him. Yeah. What was your reaction? He shouldn't have stood back up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Were you happy though, Bed Bart won? Bro, I, I like I have to tell you, like the feeling backstage, bro, I'm I'm telling you, was like it wasn't like anybody was happy. It wasn't even like I was happy. It was more like holy shit. Mm. <laughs> like Bart's dominance was so unfathomable unfathomable i have a hard time saying that word right right that it superseded like a win loss emotion like the, we, seeing him what he did to godfather and what he did to jbl like you couldn't believe that he just knocked out cold two guys this size so that to, to me like that was the overwhelming like i can't believe what this guy just did that's why when i'm telling bart which again you know he, he thinks we were out from how do you book somebody in a fake wrestling fight after that y y you know what i'm saying bro? how how is anything that he does after that in a fake wrestling fight because you got to understand bro when you look now on the wrestling side of it okay bro if anything held bart gun back it was he didn't have personality hmm. okay that's what held him back so bro now you got a guy that impressively goes through this tournament. The problem is he still doesn't have that personality. So now, say, yeah. now, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. I was going to say, is that the reason why he wasn't like booked after that? Because he went to Japan after that for months and he yeah, doesn't return like, until six bro, months later. And, and I, I took responsibility for that because after what you just did in real life, how do you top that? in the fake forum of professional wrestling because at the end of the day bro you still got to cutting a promo and having a personality is 50% of it 
So like now, okay, bro, now we're going to put you in the same uh, in the in the same wrestling ring as Austin and The Rock. And what happens when you guys got to get on the mic? Right. Like you, you you see what I'm saying? Like so like bro, that falls on me. I never expected one guy to be that dominant. So now all of a sudden, when you got to make that transition into wrestling and the guy's weak, weak skills are the promo and they're still weak. It's like, my God, bro, what the hell do you do to him for him? You don't want to water him down. You know what I'm saying, bro? I ran into the same situation with Goldberg. Okay. When I went to WCW, Goldberg was just off of the streak. Mm -hmm. Bro, how do you book a guy that just was 150 and 0? You, you, you know what I'm saying? How, how do you top that? Because, bro, the whole idea with booking and writing is you got to keep elevating the talent. You don't, you don't want them to start sliding down. You got to keep elevating them higher and higher and higher. That's right. why when you have a Goldberg and, bro, you've knocked out 150 guys in a row. How, what, what's higher than that? You know, what was higher than Bart Gunn, you know, knocking the Godfather and JBL out cold? What, what's, what's higher than that? that? That's the issue you're faced with as a writer. Right. Now, Bart Gunn, he says it, and they interview Butterbean on this too, and he says it. The Butterbean fight was a punishment for winning. Is there any truth to that whatsoever? I Listen, again, John, if those conversations took place, I was not privy to them. I don't believe that for one second. It, bro, if anything, I think it is the complete opposite. I think... First of all, bro, the only one upset by the Dr. Death knockout was Jim Ross. The Vince McMahon, there were no Vince plans with Austin, none of that stuff. The only one that was upset was Jim Ross. I would have to believe Vince McMahon now saw Bart Gunn in a light like he never fathomed. I believe he was looking at Bart Gunn now like, holy shit. You know what I mean? I think Vince McMahon was really, really impressed. I, my opinion and my belief was Vince believed Bart Gunn could beat Butterbean. Wow. Okay. That is my opinion and my belief. Now, bro, back then, you see, the story changes a little bit over the years. Of course, of course. Because back then, what Bart Gunn would tell you was once they knew this fight was happening with Butterbean, they assigned Mark Merrow's trainer. Uh, what was his first name? Rinaldi. Um I can't think of his first name, but his last name was Rinaldi. Mm -hmm. They put Bart with Rinaldi, who trained Mark Merrow during the Golden Gloves. And Rinaldi was training Bart Gunn how to be a boxer and how to box Butterbean. That's what Rinaldi was teaching Bart. Bro, that's not what Bart did in the brawl for all. You know, no, nobody was training Bart in the brawl for all. Bart was doing what he knew on instincts. All of a sudden now, this fight is booked against Butterbean, and Rinaldi is training Bart, and Bart's in the gym every day, and Rinaldi's teaching him how to box. When you look in at that match, bro, Bart Gunn goes in there, and he tries to box Butterbean. And, bro, I remember my first conversation with Bart after that knockout was him telling me I should have never done that. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I trained with him. I, you know, he, 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 he changed my form. You know, I went in there and I tried to box Butterbean. I should have never done that. I mean, that's what Bart told me after the fact. And that made all the sense in the world. 
I mean, I absolutely agreed with him a thousand percent. But I mean, my God, bro, this, this him being fed to Butterbean, woo, that, that, <laughs> that's, that's a hard pill for me to swallow, bro. So I was first row, WrestleMania 15 for that. And obviously Austin Rock being the main event is what I remember. So obviously Bart Gunn wasn't going to be in the main event because Rock was being built, that great storyline where he turns and joins corporation. So obviously I mean, the whole build was Rock Austin for even after WrestleMania for months. So that was going to be a thing. Bart Gunn gets knocked out. I still remember it vividly to this day being first row, like, holy shit. Butterbean destroyed him. Yeah. Uh, kind of what I thought was going to happen just because, I mean, to train 70 something wins versus, you know, uh, three wins, whatever, an amateur versus a pro. And then Bart Gunn basically gets released the day after. Obviously, Austin goes on with the shoot with The Rock and legendary things happen there. But did, Bart did, Gunn is did, gone did after Bart that. Bart Gunn get released the day after? He said, I think he said the day after something like that. But if you look, it's very soon thereafter he's gone and he's in japan see now so, yeah. I, I'm, I'm i'm not privy to that part of it okay you see what i'm saying like i don't know bro was it money did he i, I i'm not privy to that see that that i think bro i think you know again john this goes back to the beginning of the conversation it all goes back to bro they don't understand the role of a writer and i think a lot of that comes with john bro they just want to pin everything on vince russo like yes. everything they don't like is vince russo's fault bro when when you when you go to those creative meetings you are told this one's hurt that one's hurt this one's going to be out for three weeks this one's contract is coming up. We're probably not going to sign them. This one was let go. You're basically told, okay, guys, these are the changes to the roster you're working with. Okay. You, bro, you don't ask questions. That's a, that's a management level. That's a right. JR level. That's a Vince level. You're just basically told, okay, guys, th these are the changes in the roster. The, this is you got to work within these injuries. These guys are going to be out for this amount of time. This guy is probably no longer going to be with us after this. Ba 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 ba. You're you're not a part of that as a writer of the show. That's not that's not part of your responsibility. I I, I swear to God, bro, I, I crack up to this day. You know when 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 guys like Alvarez. We'll talk about what shit finishes Vince Russo booked for matches. Hmm. What do you like? Do you not understand what an agent is? Like, do, do, do you really not understand? You, you, bro, you wrote books. The, you know the death of WCW. Do you not understand how all parts of this business work? To actually believe a writer who is not a wrestler is going to lay out a match with two professional wrestlers bro then then what do agents do what 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 why do we what what do, if if russo's laying out the matches what are the agents doing that's what i mean bro they they, right. they really have no clue to how the inner structure works so kind of just wrapping it all up finally just kind of one like last question like the legacy of the brawl for all but is it because everyone said it like bruce said it jr said cornet they were all saying the worst idea ever in the history of the business is it the worst idea ever in the history bro, of business is that the legacy of the brawl for all bro let me tell you something and no the answer is no okay bro put put let, 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 can, can i put an end to that real quickly mm -hmm. bruce yes. and jr and you know jim cornet who you know uh um Whatever, mm -hmm. guys. Real simple. Let's let 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 let's let's put the brawl for all next to the yeti, okay? <laughs> all right. Like really, Ser seriously. Right. Right. Okay, bro. Like serious. Like really. You you want to put the brawl for all next to the gobbly gooker gooker and tell me that was the worst idea in in history, John? This is what it's all about, and this goes much deeper. This is why the wrestling business is in the shitter. Okay? Writers. Jim Ross made one point at the end of the show. I love Jim. I have long apologized to Jim 10 times over. I, I, I don't even know if I said it, bro. The only one regret I have in this business is Oklahoma. 
what right, he, Ed, Ed playing that gimmick. Yeah. You talk about in the heat of the moment and the Monday Night Wars. Oh my God, bro! That that I would take back. Um, I I wouldn't take back the brawl for all because we didn't know about CTE back then. Right. You know. Um. I love Jim Ross to death. This sums up what after all these years, bro. Ratings going down every freaking week for twenty years. You know, the Cody Ro- R- Rhodeses, the Tony Khans, the Vince McMahons. This is what they don't understand. And this is why slowly but surely, bro, they're putting their own business out of business. Okay. Ross's last statement on this thing was, who got over? Yeah, Nobody, I was going to say that to you over. too. Yeah, I was going to say who that. Yeah. Nobody got over. You know what got over, Jim? The television show got over because as television writers, our job is to get as many people as possible to watch the television show. Brawl for All was a concept that non-wrestling fans or pretty much anybody could have gotten engaged by. Bro, years and years later, millions and millions and millions of people buy UFC pay-per-views. What, what does that tell you, bro? That tells you that the, the average person, the average television viewer is drawn to a fight. Yes. So what, 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 what got over, Jim? The television got over. The product got over. The brand got over. We produced good television. And as the brawl for all went on, John, at the beginning, people thought it was a work, so they were booing it out of the building. When somebody got knocked out, the bell went off, and people were like, holy shit, they're not working. Mm -hmm. Then when you looked at the numbers and you saw the response of the audience, it was growing week by week by week by week. So it's like a writer is looking at, a writer is looking at, John, you got 52 weeks of Raw. You got 52 weeks of Sunday Night Heat. You got 12 pay-per-views. How are we going to continue to produce good television? Bro, you got to tear everything out of that arsenal. You got to pull everything out. So, you know, Jim is looking at who got over. He's looking at the wrestling aspect. Of it. Bradshaw didn't get over. The bar get over. That's what he's up. We're not looking at that, Jim. We're looking at a television show. We're looking at getting as many eyes as possible, getting as many views. We're looking at water cooler talk. We're looking at, we're looking at um, engaging the masses. We're looking at bringing new viewers to the show who may not watch wrestling. That's what we're looking at. The mindset of the Bruce Pritchards, of the Jim Cornettes, of the Jim Rosses, they will never understand that. To them, bro, this is still 1970s wrestling bullshit. You know, bro, you will get a glimmer of hope when you see a boneyard match. And then when you mm. see a Firefly, Firefly Funhouse match, and, and I know, bro, you got guys like Jeremy Borash working on that shit. Yep. But bro, like that is a that is a a a flash of a light once every three months. Bro, we did that every freaking week. We did that every freaking week, bro. You went from the Firefly Funhouse to the Boneyard match to that three hour piece of shit on Monday night. <laughs> Yeah. Like seriously, bro. Like, and these are the guys yapping at the mouth. Like they know what the hell they're doing, bro. We did boneyard match every single freaking week. That's why so many people were watching the show. 
But I love when guys sit back and they're going to make all these statements and they're so in, they're so sucked into that wrestling bubble that they cannot think one inch outside of it. And bro, these are the people that are putting their own business out of business. And, and like I say, bro, guys like you and me, all you got to do, bro, is take a back seat and, and, and really look at, God, bro, why has this business died since the Attitude Era? The, the answers are right in front of your face, bro, but nothing ever changes. There would never, ever be a brawl for all again, bro, because nobody would ever take that type of a risk. You know the wrestling business, John. Bro, we all got to protect our spot. The, the, this, the, the, there's two ways they protect their spots. When I talk about protecting your spot, bro, I'm talking about Heyman. I'm talking about the Michael Hayes's. I'm talking about the Bruce Pritches. I'm talking about guys that the world has passed them by. Like goodbye. Like the world has passed them by 20 years ago. Okay. There's mm -hmm. two ways they protect their spot. Okay. Number one. They play it safe. For sure. They do everything safe. Bro, how many times are we going to see the same Paul Heyman promo? How many times? I mean, Paul, how many a times? A million. A million, yeah. How, how many times? It's safe. So they do two ways, bro. They play it safe. And what's the second way, John, to protect their spot? Don't do anything. Just don't. Black ball. Everybody from oh, yeah, this they, or that is yeah. a threat to me. Be bury Rus bury the Russos, bury the yes. discos, you know, bear, bear, you know, anybody who is a threat, or if I see them on a podcast, then holy shit, bro. Like that's the MO, bro. So you play it safe and you bury every single person that you know could do a better job than you. And those are the people we have in the wrestling business. And that's why numbers continue to go down. It's not the best of the best anymore. That's for sure. It's uh, kind of the best of the rest, I guess you could say. Yep. Yep, exactly. Now, it's been awesome kind of going down memory lane with you, talking a lot more about the Brawl for All than you got able to talk about in the documentary, which is really, really cool. So, Vince, I just uh, thank you so much uh, for the time. It's awesome. And hope to do this uh, again in the future with you, talk about little topics. But it was awesome to kind of relive the Brawl for All after it basically got resurrected uh, 22 years later. Right, exactly. No, it, it was. And, and like I said, I wish I would have had more time on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my takeaway, though, honestly, was, bro, the thing that I was happy about the most uh, was that Penelope made the show. Uh, Penelope <laughs> um, Penelope is a big star now. Yes, got yes. a big head. Uh, yep. that, that was my favorite part of the show. Like everything else, like, I, I knew, it, like, it, it, listen, it is what it is. You know, people, <laughs> I was responsible uh, you know, I was the one responsible for ending Dr. Death's career. Like, okay, wh whatever. But to me, it was it was seeing Penelope. But, John, I want to get this interview like, uh, you know, I mean, we, we might put this out everywhere because mm -hmm. it was really an in-depth talk. So yes. if we do, man, I just want to um, – bro, tell, tell, tell the people about some of, you know, your shows, bro, that they can get on, you know, either Russo's brand or Patreon. Tell them about some of the, some of the shows, you know, through you and Chad that we've added. So we have Chad has his Francine show, Eyes Up Here, which is uh, on the Russo's brand on Patreon. We have the Triple Threat podcast with Shane Douglas, which is obviously available on Russo's brand, the, the core Russo's brand. For me, myself, we have the uh, two man power trip. We have Take You to School with Dr. Tom Pritchard, which is another show. Uh, we have a show over on podcast, one that I produce for Rick Bassman, if you remember Rick, mm -hmm. for, uh, it's called Talking Tough. And I actually co-host Dutch Mantel's University of Dutch with Dutch on the MLW radio network. And we got some other stuff kind of uh, coming down the pike as well. Um, some new shows are developing. So, And we do our weekly flagship uh, interview series every week. Uh, last week we had on Evan Husney from Dark Side of the Ring. Each week we have somebody different. You've been on the show twice. Uh, 
Um, we've had your buddy Cornette on a, a lot. We've had on Jim Ross a lot. We've had on, we did the last ever interview with uh, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. That's we've awesome. had on Kane. We've had on Goldberg, superstar Billy Graham, Bruno Sammartino, Eric Bischoff a few times. So, I mean, we kind of run the gamut and do a lot of uh, interviews. But uh, like I said, you got Dr. Tom, Rick Bassman, Dutch, Francine, Shane. Tom, Tom's still running the gamut. School, right? Give, give Tom School a plug. Yes, JPWA. The if you go to his website, jpwrestlingacademy.com, all the information on them. It's actually he's the head trainer, and Kane Glenn Jacobs is the owner of the school. What, so you kind of can't get any better than those two. Where's he running that out of, John? Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, okay. I thought did Tom move there to run the school? Because yes. I know he's from yep. Texas, right? Yes. Yeah, he moved there to run the school. Yep. Oh, I did not know. Yeah, Knoxville. very cool. Yeah, bro. The uh, Dutch show. I, I swear to God, like. John, one thing I used to pitch all the time, which I think would be the highest rated television show in the history. I, I think the rating would be higher than like a Seinfeld. Bro, could you imagine giving Dutch Mantel and Jim Cornette a reality show where they live together? Do you <laughs> yeah, it would know be awesome. how freaking yep. awesome that would be, bro? Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah. I always say, bro, listen, guys, Cornette could say whatever he wants about me. What, 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 bro, listen, it's become part of Cornette's stick and has become part of his folklore. And like, I get it, but I've, I've always said like, what, bro, the two quickest wits that I've ever met in my life are Cornette and Dutch. Oh, I believe. 100%. I, I mean, bro, be, being around them, the shit, they say off the top of their heads, unfreaking believable. That's why I always, I always said, man, you do something with these two guys together, and you give a, the world a taste of these two. They won't be able to take their eyes off it. I totally agree. Yeah. Both quick wits, great talkers. Two of the best talkers ever. Two yeah. great storytellers too. I mean, you give them a little topic, and whew, great story comes out of it. Yep. When, 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 when is when does the Dutch show air? Every Friday on MLW Radio. Okay. All right. Yeah. University guys, of Dutch. Yep. Yeah. Check that out. Support Tom Pritchett. Tom Pritchett, you know, guys, let me tell you something. <clears throat> let me be, let me tell you. I don't know how much this is known. Tom Pritchett can't stand his own brother. Okay, bro. Because Bruce Pritchett is a douchebag. Okay. <laughs> and he's a liar and he's a hot bag of wind. And Tom Pritchett is the freaking nicest, greatest, most honest guy you'll meet. Um, I, I, I love Tom. Um, and yeah, bro, I knew he was starting that school a while back. So yeah, check that yeah, out. He's a great guy. Not, he's the best. I love is talking he, to him every week. Is he still training during this time or he can't? No, they're not allowed. Wow. They're not allowed. So they do something like you can go on their Patreon, a JPWA yeah. Patreon and do stuff. So he's kind of doing something where it's like virtual, where yeah. it's like, guys, do this, Good. train this. You could still do holds. You could still, you know, work out. You could still run, still get in shape, but he just can't have physical contact with somebody. So it's like virtual training. Yeah. Well, that's good for him. At least he's, mm -hmm. he's doing it. Yeah. Well, that is it. You got, bro, you got to wrap it up because it's your show. All right. Yes. So thank you to everybody for uh, tuning in. I'm at two man power trip on Twitter at Vince Russo on Twitter, I believe, if, if that's uh, correct. The, the, the Vince Russo. Oh, at The Vince Russo on Twitter. So, and, and this has been it for the Brawl for All. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Awesome stuff. Was it the worst idea ever? That's up to you to decide. Yeti, Thank Yeti, you. Yeti. Put it next to the Yeti, bro. Tell <laughs> or is the Yeti? Everybody. Bro, if you want to make a decision, listen, I'm going to tell you, pick these three if you want to make a decision. Watch the Brawl for All. Stick the gobbly gooker in the middle. Mm -hmm. maybe samba simba samba simba you might throw in there awful uh then what what fake diesel fake razor mm -hmm. terrible i want to throw that in there terrible and then of course you have the yeti watch all of the above and then tell me if your vote is for the brawl for all yep so there you have it, folks there's a list of the worst ideas ever where do you rank the brawl for all? that's up to you thank you for tuning in stay healthy out there wash your hands and social distance thank you folks see you next time